Hi, I'm Erin here at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and I'm here today to talk to all of you significant others out there who have a gamer that you love, and you are probably wondering, what is Miniature Wargaming? I know that's what I thought when I first met my husband and went to his house and saw a bunch of little tiny men. Uh, they were dwarves at the time. Little tiny men uh, sitting on a table with files and paint brushes and other little things all around. And I had absolutely no idea what that was. I thought it was just a hobby, you know, um, collecting painting miniatures like people do assemble cars and stuff like that. Ships in a bottle. Yeah, it's that's not what it is. If only. It, it is far more complicated than that. So he told me it was a game. I'm like, I like games. That sounds fun. Let's play. It wasn't that simple because first he told me, well, I'm still making my army. And I'm going, what does that mean exactly? So today I am going to show you. Miniature Wargaming is essentially chess on steroids with some hobby making, modeling, painting, and miniature building included. So this is his unbelievably large Necromunda box that he has yet to assemble. And I am not doing an unboxing here because I am in no way qualified for that position. But I am gonna show you what this involves. So inside this box, you will see a bunch of little plastic things in a sheet. This is what these things start out looking like. And they painstakingly go through and find out these are all numbered, okay? They go through the book, that the instruction book, and it tells them what piece numbers attach to which thing. And they match it up on these with these little numbers. And then they painstakingly cut them out using these sprue cutters like this. Then they file those down because these things all have mold lines. And if you have any care about the detail and quality of your paint job, the mold lines will show. So they get these little tiny metal files and they file them down. Then they glue them all together according to these instructions and in all of this there are multiple choices lots of times. So you can pick different heads, you can pick different arms with different weapons based on all these choices of what you want your um, character in your army to do. Okay, then if we dig a little bit deeper, and I tell you this box boy is almost what I do. You've got this thing, it's like some sort of fancy ruler and my husband refuses to take the plastic off of any of these. I tried once and the look I got, I'm telling you, wasn't pretty. This I think has something to do with like the distances. So they use this to tell whether or not they're close enough to the characters to fight them. And then you got this thing, which is like a range thing. I think this is for damage. Like you put it, you put this part here and this tells you whether or not the weapon you deployed actually hit anything if it's within this arc and it's all pretty. And once again, something else you have to punch out. And then we've got bases. This is what you glue these little men to, your little figure, your miniatures to. Okay, and they're different sizes and different sizes are different scales sometimes and they have different values in determining who can do what and how many points they're worth and all this kind of thing. And every war game will come with dice, lots of dice. Now these ones, I don't know if you can see or not, are some have specialty dice. So they've got symbols on them that mean certain things inside the game. And then some of them are just regular six sided dice. They also have dice that are 20 sided, 10 sided, four sided. You wouldn't even believe all the different variations of dice you could have. I'm used to Monopoly. You get two six sided dice, you call it a day. Then you've got a stack of cards here, and these will in some way affect the game. Then you have decals. That is so that you can give your army men chapters, and then you, you apply those on their shoulders or somewhere on them so that that way you know they're all part of the same group, platoon, I don't know, whatever it's called. It probably depends on the game. 
And then you've got all these tokens which help you keep track of all these various things that are going on in the game. And it looks like this comes with some sort of game mat that you spread out, because these games can take up various amounts of space. Some of them are three foot by three foot, some are four foot by four foot, some are four foot by six foot, which that's, you know, like the size of a full grown man and the size of a small child in table form. So that's, that's, a, that's a space commitment right there. And now you've got, looks like this one came with a bunch of terrain. So terrain are the things, the obstacles on the game board that the um, that they fight with. So this is probably why my husband bought this box looking at how much terrain is here. He has started uh, 3D printing terrain because I got him a 3D printer last year in an attempt to um, get him to stop molding terrain, but he does that too with resin out in the garage because that stuff's stinky and it needs ventilation. So this way, that the, his 3D printer runs almost constantly when he is home. There is a constant whirring noise coming from the motor of it zipping back and forth and all around making I have absolutely no idea what. So this is what comes in this box. So when you think game, I don't know about you, this is generally not what I had in mind. I think of a game that has, you know, a traditional box, the instructions are on a pamphlet, maybe Maybe they're written directly on the inside of the lid. That's how games were when I was a kid. So I think I've just dated myself, but that's okay. So after they get all that assembled, then they end up looking and painted and glued and filed. They end up looking something like this, okay? And they come in a whole little squad or however many you're allowed for your group. And I think that depends on the game you're playing and the weapons you choose and that kind of thing. So all of that effort so that you can get this. There's more than just this amount in this box. This is a really large box. So after you do that and you've painted them, then they set up a game with terrain. Okay. And then they usually have some on two sides and then you fight the person across from you. Now the rules as I stated, are not even in this box necessarily. This one might be a self-contained box, but usually and often they come in something that looks like this. Do you see how thick this is? Yes, there are pictures, but this is just the codex for Space Marines. So that's just for the one particular type of army, the chapter that he chose. There's a whole separate rule book of the rules that apply to all different parts of the game. And basically what they do that you'll see, see they've got a lovely color pictures in here. They've got stories that go on. And then they've got these things which are tables that tell you all the different aspects of the game and the things you can do. Okay, and here's more information about that. And here are different, see remember I showed you those decals. This is where those come in. They can, you choose one of these and that's the faction or some unit or whatever it is. So you can paint them certain ways. They have suggestions for how you can paint them. So this isn't just a game you just go open up and play. And the rules for these things are crazy sometimes. Okay, like they have pages and pages and pages and pages of rules. Some of these rule books are over a hundred pages. Personally, if it takes me longer to learn how to play the game than the time I intend to spend playing the game, I'm probably not going to play that game. That, that is way too much time commitment. So like, I, this is why I said, it's like chess on steroids, okay? But with a crafting element thrown in. So you can really make it your own and personalize it and that kind of thing. So generally, these have these tables. So if you build this guy, Sergeant Cronus, okay? It tells you his name and the vehicle and all kinds of other stuff uh, that he can have, the type of weapon he has, the range, how far away it is, something to do with the ruler. Then there's SAPD and abilities, and I have absolutely no idea what those things mean, but I'm sure that they're very important to the game and they have something to do with how much, you know, um, how many points you have, what dice you have to throw, how much damage you have to 
you can accrue before you're out of the game, how much damage you can inflict on somebody else. And that is all determined by those lovely, lovely dice that are specialty or come into play. We've got a bunch of them here. Okay, see, just like that, 20 sided, 12 sided, all kinds of them. So you roll to determine whether or not you were successful at whatever attack you were trying to achieve on your opponent. And then I'm assuming in most cases, whoever kills off all the other people's uh, army dies, or sometimes they have things called uh, missions and there will be one thing, it's like capture the flag. So there's one, try, there's one thing they're trying to achieve and whoever achieves it first, um, they, they win. So uh, that is the very short version of what uh, miniature wargaming is. And it all involves this tactical strategy, playing with these little miniatures that you use a very, very thick, and yes, I know for all of you professional wargamers out there looking at this, yes, I know this is not the official rule book, rule book and this is the codex, but this is what was handy. So you have a set of rule books, you've got supplemental, supplemental information and rule books to play, tables that you use to determine who can do what and how they do it. Then you, when you finally set out to play on usually quite a massive space and you have to remember all these rules, you use dice to determine who wins. So you paid it to make it your own and it's, it's a lot of fun and he really enjoys it. And I think it's wonderful that he has a hobby and Hey, you know what? It, it keeps him off the street. So what, how can I complain? But this is, in a nutshell, what miniature wargaming is. I hope it's become a little bit clearer to you. Uh, or perhaps I've confused you even more, because typically when my husband tried to explain it to me, I left with more questions than I came in with. So hopefully this gives you a general overview of what miniature wargaming is and the different pieces. So if you see this stuff floating around your house or your loved one's house or space, you have some clue what on earth it is, because I certainly didn't when I started. So. Thank you again for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. See you later.